for the Minnesota Abortion Act. Hello, are you here for the graphic design training? Yeah. Okay, welcome. We are just getting started. Um, so yeah, thank you to WAM, Women Against Military Madness, for inviting me tonight to give this training. Um, they're a great organization. If you aren't already familiar with them, you should check them out. Um, but I'll just get right into it. So who am I and why should you listen to me and take my advice about graphic design? Um, I am an organizer. I come from the student movement originally. I organized with SDS for many years. Um, and then after Roe v. Wade was over overturned, started working, um, or I guess kind of was one of the founding members of the Minnesota Abortion Action Committee. Um, and I'm also a member of Free Road Socialist Organization. So um, where I draw from in my artistic sensibilities is definitely from drawing people to the streets and generating mainly protest graphics and other event graphics. Um, I don't have any professional training in design. It's just something that I've kind of honed over the years, like specifically for this purpose. And so this training will be definitely oriented towards like, how do you make graphics that are effective as an organizer? Um, not so much how do you make, you know, other graphics, you know, for marketing or business or whatever. This is specifically about how you make graphics for the movement. Welcome. We're just getting started. Um, so that's a little bit about me. But let's talk about more generally what makes good graphic design. So I've broken it down into a few categories here. Um, I think the most essential things that folks should be thinking about when they're making a graphic for a protest or an event is readability org presentation and elements of design. And I will go through and break down what each of these means to me. Um, so let's start with readability. And also feel free to stop me at any time if you have questions, but I'll also save some time at the end for questions. So readability. Um, these are some strategies that I use to make sure that my graphics are easily understood and read by people. And I think a challenge that we have as organizers is that like, we live in a world full of apathetic people a little bit sometimes, and we really want um, people to care about the issues that we're organizing around. We really want to get them out to join us in the streets um, so that we can mobilize as many people as possible. So that's the task at hand and readability is something that really helps us with that. Um, so say somebody is walking by your flyer that you you know posted up on the street, they're going to look at it for a couple seconds at most, but you want them to really read the most important information. So. Font size is a great tool for conveying the importance of certain information over other information. Maybe you want, you know, the title of the protest and the protest itself and the date to be in a really large font so that people can receive that information, even if they're only looking at it for a moment. Um, and then, you know, longer sentences of description and stuff like that, that can be in a smaller font because it's less important. Um, other ways to make your graphic readable using color or emphasize text to break up information. A lot of the times we are trying to fit a lot of information on one graphic, right? And so you want to present it in a way that's like easily digestible and doesn't make people's eyes cross or whatever when they're trying to read it. Um, so those are just some strategies that I've found helpful for kind of breaking it up. Um, other elements of readability, you want to make sure that your background is high contrast from the color of your text. So you're not choosing like, you know, a light yellow background and a white text because nobody can read that. Um, and then you also want to have a logical flow of information. So it doesn't really make sense if the, you know, the fact that this is a protest is buried at the bottom of the graphic. You want that to, you know, be towards the top. Stuff that is more important should go towards the top and be in a bigger font um, and then kind of read. Um, left to right and top to bottom. So we'll look at some examples, but I just wanna have you guys look at this graphic for a second. I'll like, let it marinate a little bit. Okay. Okay, what do you remember from that graphic? Anything at all, shout it out. No, protest for abortion access. Protest for abortion access, anything else? Okay. We'll go here and then here. Thank you. Um, I remember just where the information was. Like it was like the dates and times and place were here, the title was here, mm -hmm. or the description was here. So if I wanted to find information, I go to things like that. Yeah. Awesome. What do you remember? That is about what I was going to say. Yeah. Kind of the orientation of things. Okay. Awesome. So let's break down kind of what we have going on here. 
So as you can see in the upper left corner, we have the protest slogan or the main title. So students demand a clinic on every campus. We want abortion access for students. Um, that's pretty clear and eye-catching. If you are a student who cares about reproductive rights, you might see this graph and go, oh shit, I will so be there. Um, and then directly to the right of that, you've got the when and where. There's also some kind of smaller graphics that convey things like the date, the location and the time, like both in the actual text, but then like visually, right, with the little pin drop and the picture of the calendar and the little clock. Um, so that's just kind of a way to create interest and make people's brains work because some people are um, more visual learners. Some people are more receptive to information conveyed like by reading. So just something to think about using different strategies there. And then we've got something that names that this is a protest. I think this is a mistake that I see people who are just getting into graphic design make a lot is like you as an organizer know very deeply what you're like what action your group is calling because you've talked about it, right? You're like, oh, it's going to be this protest is going to be here and we're trying to get people out for this reason or we're trying to target this politician, right? Like, you know, the ins and outs of your action. And so sometimes you can forget to kind of lay out the basic facts of it. Like, yeah, this isn't, you know, a kumbaya, like we're going to sit around and just like chat, like this is a protest. So we're naming that it's a protest and we're setting expectations so that people show up knowing what they're getting into. Um, and then we have the group, which is SDS. The group logo is clearly visible. In my experience, people like to know what group is organizing the action. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, oh, is this sketchy? Is this normal? Do, can I trust this organization? People you know, feel a little bit more comfortable when they know what group is responsible. And also, if you're trying to grow your organization, this is a great way to do it. Say, like, we organize these type of events. You can expect this kind of stuff from us. Um, and then at the bottom, we've got a quick blurb in case the above messaging was not clear, explaining that, you know, the University of Minnesota doesn't currently have abortion access on campus, and that if we added clinics, it would expand abortion access statewide and make Minnesota more of a sanctuary state for abortion in the upper Midwest. So just some stuff to really drive home the above points, but again, is probably the least important of the information on the graphic, and so that's why it's smallest and at the bottom. So. Do folks have any questions about how I laid this graphic out? If not, we can keep it moving. Cool. All right. So welcome. Feel free to grab a seat. Um, we're just going through kind of some of the basic elements of graphic design here. Are you recording this? Yes. Great. Yeah. So you can go back and watch the beginning yeah, of that. <laughs> um, okay. So the next portion is org presentation. Um, so this is a concept where you're thinking about like, how do I essentially create a brand for my organization so that people recognize it? Um, and as much as we're not really in the business of trying to like market and make money and all that kind of stuff, it is important that people see your graphics and like kind of instantly recognize them um, for who they're being organized by. Um, and it just, I think, helps people like who would normally get lost looking in the feed of Instagram or whatever to like find the stuff that they're actually looking for. So org presentation, a couple strategies that I really found helpful, especially in the NAC, I feel like we've done this pretty well, is choosing a color palette. Um, so if folks aren't familiar with us, a lot of our graphics are purple and people really like the purple <laughs> and compliment us on it. So Say you're maybe a climate organization, you would want to do some green, you know, um, anti-war, you can really choose any color you want, I guess. There's not like a super strong color association there, but having a, a general color palette, maybe two or three colors that you use um, can really help shape that org presentation. Um, sticking to a few fonts. I appreciate this one. I like looking at a feed on social media that's like pretty cohesive and doesn't just look like a, every single graphic was made by a different person, even if it was, you know, because orgs are full of lots of different people who want to contribute. But if we can kind of narrow it down to a few fonts, it can make things look a lot more cohesive. Um, transparent group logo. This just is like a level of professionalism that's nice, right? Like when your logo doesn't have like a big white block behind it because you just slapped it on there. It's nice when it's like floating and it's just a circle or is transparent, you can see the background through it. 
Um, and the last point is just to kind of allow yourself to have fun with it and like maybe try to, I don't know, step outside the bounds of what you think traditionally a graphic from this organization might look like and see if you can come up with anything new. So let's look at some, hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it says enough for graphic design. There we go. All right. So here are some examples of what we've done in the Minnesota Abortion Action Committee to kind of craft that org presentation. Um, I guess I'll ask you guys, are there any things that feel consistent across these graphics that you would want to point out? Yes. He said the color palette, the fonts, they're all like creative, like mm -hmm. I feel very creative. Right, yeah, and and in the NAC we can kind of be a little more fun and you know, we're talking about women's rights and reproductive justice, so it can be a little more like girly pop or whatever. <laughs> um, anything else that stands out to folks? Yeah. There are different tones of purple, mm -hmm. kind of like you mentioned, so fuchsia, pastel, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but purple is at the center of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's great. So now that's a Manac graphic. Um, so I think that anyone who is all at all familiar with our organization would see this in their feed and stop to read it, I think more so because it looks like something that we would toast. So, and I just think it is, it's nice. It's just pleasing. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about elements of design here. So this point is more about how do you take your graphic from just like the functional conveying of information, you know, like you pick a Canva template, you plug in the information. How do you take it from point A to point B to actually look like something that you purposefully designed? Um, and so these are a couple strategies that I've used to make my Canva graphics look less like Canva graphics, if that makes sense. Um, so I think things that help with this, um, choosing a simple color palette. Um, a mistake that I see some folks make is to have a really eclectic color palette, like multiple fonts and different colors and each little graphic that they put on there is like a totally different color palette and it just ends up being like way too much to look at. Clean, simple graphics that are maybe like one color plus black and white or two colors plus white really just makes things a lot easier to look at. Um, Visual balance is the idea that you kind of want to create shapes within your graphics. Um, and so if you have a square graphic, because it's going to go up on Instagram, you kind of want the content inside the square to also make a square. Because if you've got um, a piece of text that's like running up against one side of the graphic and then another image that's super left aligned and running up against the opposite side of the graphic, it just looks kind of random. Um, but if you can line things up so that they form a shape, it looks a lot more uh, cohesive. And I'll show some examples of that in a second. Um, texture and interest are just easy ways to make your design look more intentional. So as you can kind of see in like the background of this slide, I've got a little bit of like a fuzzy quality to the blue. Um, just makes it look like a little bit more elevated than if that was just like straight on blue. Um, and then ultimately, I think the easiest way to learn how to make your designs look more intentional, look more designed, um, is to emulate things that you see other people doing um, or use the templates that Canva has available and try to like build off of them in your own style. Um, because at the end of the day, like these are templates that were created by graphic designers who have degrees and stuff like that. So it's like, they probably kind of know what they're doing <laughs> and we should uh, follow their lead a little bit if we're feeling totally lost. Okay, so this is a series of graphics that I made for Manac, um, where I think I'm employing some of these strategies. So as you can see, I've created the visual balance, right? Because each of these square graphics kind of has a square within them. Um, so I've got all the text really neatly lined up 
and we've got very minimal space between the lines of text. Um, another thing I think folks are sometimes afraid to do when they first start doing graphic design is they're afraid to make their text big, but big text is great. Uh, big text is readable, big text is eye-catching. Um, look at how big the word protest is. Like that's quite large in um, proportion to other elements of the graphic. But when you're looking at, at, at on it, at, when you're looking at it on a phone, um, I think it reads really nicely. We were also using a super simple color palette. Um, so we've got this kind of darker purple, we've got a lighter pink, and then we've got a cream color, and that's it. Um, and so while we're only using three colors, and that might seem like a little boring or a little basic, I think it's really effective here because if I had any more colors, it would just be like visually super overstimulating. Um, Question? Yeah. Was it intentional that the the, the letters be so squished together? Yes. In the left? Yeah, it makes it a little harder to read. I think it's perhaps a little bit hard to read in this format, but oh, on okay. a phone, it's a little bit easier. Um, yeah. I'm also breaking up the text um, with color to convey the importance of certain information. So like in the middle slide, you can see there's a little blurb on the bottom. Anti-abortion centers mislead people seeking, abort uh, seeking abortions and prevent them from receiving uh, comprehensive care. So the words mislead and prevent are really like elevated because they're a lighter text color. Um, so just stuff like that. We've also got a little graphic on the far left in the corner of a protest that is um, kind of colored to be a similar pink to the text, just so it all looks cohesive. We've got the little tiny bullhorns that are alternating colors of the color palette. So um, just things that can make your uh, design look, yeah, a little more intentional. Okay. Here are some flyers that I made because I also wanted to demonstrate, right, that like the things that we're aiming for in an Instagram graphic aren't necessarily the same things we're aiming for when we make a flyer that we pass out to folks on the street. So we've got like more information here. We've got slogans. We've got, um, you know, a little paragraph of blurb explaining stuff. Um, so let's see more of that simple color palette, I think, is being employed, especially like in the flyer on the far right. We've, we've got a uh, black, white, and red are the only colors. But I wouldn't say that that graphic is like visually uninteresting because there's lots of other stuff going on, but it still looks nice and clean. Um, yeah, I think, trying to think if I missed anything. Texture, yeah, um, got some nice texture behind the one on the far right. There's a little bit of like a white speckly effect. I don't know how hard this is to see like with the projector, but. Um, and then we've got um, like kind of a slightly opaque image behind the flyer on the far left um, so that you can kind of understand that even though this is a book release, it's a book that's about political struggle because there's a picture of a protest in the background, that kind of stuff. We can sneak in some political messaging with the images that we choose. So, okay, <laughs> we've all seen some bad graphics, I would assume. So let's break down the reasons why they're not quite working. Um, and I went ahead and I made a bad graphic on purpose because I felt like it would be a little bit rude for me to take examples of graphics that I don't like and roast them. So just so you know, I made this one, I'm not coming for anybody. <laughs> so let's talk about what's not working here. Do people have any initial reactions as to why? This graphic is maybe lacking. Feel free to just shout it out. Back there first. You did the like yellow and white for the main title. Yeah. It's really hard to read. Color. Yeah, the, the blue and that light gray are really close together in color. So there's not enough contrast. Definitely. Other things. Yeah. Uh, it's like your eye doesn't know where to go. <laughs> um, and also, there's no, like you said, like shape to it. Like they're all centered, but they're like just, just different spaces. Right. They're just kind of, the information is just floating, yeah. you know? It doesn't feel like the placement of the text is at all interacting with other parts of the graphic, um, other stuff. Yeah. Just, I didn't hear what you said, so maybe it was, but there's too many wrong things. You know? <laughs> right. 
Yeah, we've got this huge Canva logo, which if you all remember from earlier, I had said that um, size conveys importance on a graphic. And so looking at this for a split second, you're like, is this a Canva sponsored event? Like, what is it? You know, like, what am I looking at? Why is Canva the largest thing? And it's so much bigger than even the title of the event. Um, so that's definitely uh, a little bit out of whack. Anything else? Yeah. I don't love how the image is diagonal. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So we've got this this uh, cutout image, which could be cute, right? Um, but it's tilted, and also the feet are cut off, and so it just kind of creates this weird line. Um, okay. Anything else? All right. Let's look at a better version of this graphic. Okay. So. Maybe let's talk a little bit about what is working better here or how we fix some of the problems in the first version of the graphic. Any thoughts? The contrast is better. Better contrast, yep. So it's a darker blue and we, we're using a white that stands out a little bit more so it's more readable. Anything else? Really drawn to the title. Yeah. Like that's obvious. Right, so we're relaying information like in an order that makes sense and also in a size that makes sense. So graphic design Skillshare is the largest thing and then it moves our eye downward. We've still got technically the same amount of round objects in the graphic, but they're a lot smaller. And so it's not feeling like there's all these random orbs floating around. Um, we've got a white background behind Canva that kind of ties it into the white text. Got a white background behind the Manac logo that does the same thing. Um, this image that we're using, the feet are no longer cut off. It's no longer at a weird canted angle. Um, and it also, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can recall, it also has a white background um, behind the, uh, the people that really ties it into uh, the text and the other like pops of white elements. Um, we've got some cute little uh, imagery that conveys furthermore that this is in like an artistic minded event. We've got a paintbrush and a pencil that is in the same colorway as the rest of the graphic. Um, and then at the bottom, uh, the information that people are probably going to look for last, which is um, when and where. Uh, so yeah, that is a, a better version of the graphic, I have to say, um, using some of the strategies we talked about before. So let's forget about that one. Okay, so this is the part of the training where I usually open like a Canva project and we try to like make a graphic together and I show you kind of how I achieve some of these things. My issue today is that this is a split screen situation and so like my mouse is not visible, like this is not visible on my computer. So I'm gonna try my best <laughs> to do this like looking over here while I can't really see. So we'll see where we get. Maybe I'll just pull my chair out more. Okay. So step one. Well, first of all, what kind of graphic do we want to make? I guess. Anybody in an organization that has an upcoming event you want to make a graphic for? <laughs> or anything general? Okay. Yeah. Can we make... Um, this is now available on this website or something. Watch the the presentation. Watch there. the watch the graphic designing design <laughs> training on YouTube. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So there's a suggestion that we make a graphic about this training that we're watching right now. Pretty meta. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that I like to do when I open up Canva, I've got this all like created to the correct size of like an Instagram post. Um, is I like to choose a theme and kind of go off of that. So, um, you well, can how do you make, sorry, how do you make it to the correct size? Um, create design over here. And then they've got all these nice options of different sizing. So like if you wanted to do a flyer that's like the size of a printer paper, eight and a half by 11, they've got flyer, eight and a half by 11. If you wanted to make something that was the size of a PowerPoint presentation, they've got presentation. Um, 
And then up here in my most used is this one that just says Instagram post square. So I went ahead and clicked that and it just opened a new project. Okay. So now we're in the project that we just made. Um, up here in design, which is the top tab, there are a bunch of really cool themes that you can use or templates, I should say. So let's see if any of these are speaking to us. What if you type in like YouTube? Yeah. Let's type in YouTube. Or maybe like computer. Okay. Give me one that's cute. Well, I kind of like the one with the mouse, that one. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got a whole template. And then it also shows you more that are like similar to the one you just chose, which I think is a really fun feature. But okay. So we'll close out of that. Um, we obviously don't need all of this stuff. We can just get rid of that. Okay, so people people like this one. Um, if you wanted to change the colors, you can choose different background colors or even the individual graphics. You can usually change the colors of them, which is a nice feature. That's how I got like the little paintbrush and the pencil to be the same color as the rest of the graphic is I went in and I chose the right colors. Um, I'll put this here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and add some text. So there's this text um, option over here. Add a heading, and let's say now it's streaming. Now streaming. Um, I'm thinking we could say. Graphic design tra training now available. And then right here, we can say on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and type that in. And then we can mess around with the box. I usually like to make my graphics all caps. I don't know. That's just a preference for the most important information part because it makes it bigger and easier to read. So graphic design training. Maybe we'll just do that much. Okay. Let's choose a font. We've got all these fun fonts here. That one's pretty cute. Okay. All right. I'm going to show us how to do something that I was doing in a lot of those graphics, which is like aligning your text. Um, so you can obviously adjust the size of the text here, but if you want one line to be bigger than the other line, a little hack that I do is see how we've got the cursor at the end of this line. You go ahead and hit return. And now there are two separate lines and you can adjust the size of each line. <coughs> so um, there's now an extra space there, but we'll just get rid of that. So like, see how I'm on training? Now I can make training big and it doesn't affect the size of graphic design, which is really handy. I'm gonna go ahead and align this to the left. Just that's gonna look good. But now, as we can see, there's all this empty space here, which is really not cute. So if you wanna get rid of that, you can go up to spacing and you can adjust the line spacing. So let's get rid of that space. And now it's a lot nicer to look at. Make it a little bit smaller so that it fits in the area that we want. I apologize. I like craning my neck to try to see this. So it looks a little bit, um, probably not as good as it would normally. Move this down. But I think that's that's looking pretty cute. Um, maybe we want to 
make this that's not super readable. Okay, graphic design training. We'll do another thing of text. It says now available on YouTube. Again, yeah. So I'll go ahead and make that the same font. I'll try to make these lines the same width <clears throat> in a way that I did before, and then eliminate that space between. What is, is it, what's the Wham YouTube name? Oh, um, I think it's just like the whole name. So maybe just like the logo below yeah. YouTube. Sure. Um, I'm just going to put a little thing here for now because yeah. the point of this is to show how to do the skills, not necessarily to walk away with finished graphic, right? So, and I'll put like, do -do -do -do. insert info here. <laughs> That's a Robin task for later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> can I add one thing? Sure. Do you think you can go over like really briefly like what each like tool and symbol means on like the white horizontal bar? Because you can't go through everything, but maybe right. like as you're editing, like what is the things like that most commonly text. show up? Sure. On the text here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like this one. Yeah, absolutely. So here is where you have the drop down for all the different fonts. Um, this is where you can adjust the size of the font. This is where you can adjust the text color. You can make some fonts bold, but not all. It's like whether or not they're designed to be bolded or italicized. You can do that here. This is kind of like the same as um, you would do on Microsoft Word, right? There's the italicize. You can underline stuff. You can strike stuff through. Um, this is if you want to really quickly make your text all uppercase or all lowercase. Um, this is alignment, so whether you want something to be left aligned, centered, or right aligned. Um, this is like, again, another feature from like Microsoft Word. If you want to make a list with bullet points and numbers, you could do that. Um, this is the spacing tool, so you can adjust the amount of space in between your lines, but then with letter, you can also adjust the amount of space between your letters. That's called kerning. Um, so if for some reason you picked a font, but you're like, the letters are too far apart, I just want them a little closer, you can make that adjustment. Um, then we have effects, which I usually try to avoid this tab just because I feel like it doesn't look very good most of the time. But if you are struggling with trying to make your text stand out from your background, you can add a shadow, you can add what's called lift which is basically just like a super diffuse shadow so you can kind of see that there's like now and you can adjust the intensity of that so you could do like a lot of lift or just a little bit of that drop shadow um you can make your text hollow i think that looks yucky um or it's splice where you have a color and then an outline just a plain old outline this whole row right here i'm like only use it if you really have to. I think it looks bad. <laughs> um, echo, glit, like these are just kind of like silly ones. Neon, you can make it look like a neon sign. Um, and then at the bottom, oh wait, sorry. There's this one where you can add a background. But this one I find to be pretty finicky because it just like shapes and molds to the words. Whereas if you were to like, grab a square from the elements tab and like line it up. Sometimes I think it looks a little bit better. Um, and then curve, whoa. <laughs> um, you can adjust this to make your uh, text kind of form a circle around a given thing. But we'll get rid of that because that's done. No, okay. So yeah, those are the different things that you can do with your text, which 
Uh, I don't spend a lot of time doing. I usually just kind of stick to the method of like big text that's aligned in a straight line, but up to you. Play around with it. Um, and I can show you all a couple other of them, um, a couple more of the other tabs here. We've got the elements tab, which is where you find any sort of pre-made graphic that your heart could desire. So say we wanted the YouTube logo. We've got a bunch of those here, right? So different ones that you can choose from. Some of them are even GIFs if you want to get crazy with it. Meaning like the moving pictures here. Subscribe. Yep. So you can find a bunch of stuff. You can find really basic shapes that you can adjust. So like this one, you can move to be any size that you want in any direction, which is nice. If you're trying to like create a background behind text, this is something I do sometimes, um, but we're not going to do that today. Go away. <laughs> okay. Um, Brand, this is a tab I've never used. So I don't even know what to tell you. I don't use it. <laughs> um, uploads. This is where you can upload images um, that you want to use in your graphics or logos that you want to use in your graphics. So you can see here that I was just making a graphic for Ask Me 3800 this week. So we have that logo in there. That's my union. Um, we've got, uh, I made a graphic that had the AMP, American Muslims for Palestine, Minnesota logo in it. Um, and I will just drop in an example here and we can go from there. So here's a photo that I grabbed from one of the Wham Corner rallies. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that to the front so we can work on it. So a lot of graphics nowadays are in the style of like having a little cutout on them of a protester or something. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So we've got the image imported into the graphic and then we can go up here and hit edit image. So now we have all these effects, right? Background remover is your best friend. This does all the work for you most of the time. If you have Canva, if you have Canva Pro, which is the assumption that I'm operating under. <laughs> um, yeah. So now you, you can see that this is a cute little cutout of somebody right here. Um, so now we can paste him into the graphic and use that. But I would say, right, that um, the coloring of the image just doesn't really match the rest of the graphics. So we want to make it kind of blend in a little bit more. Um, so I go down here to the duotone effect. So this basically like changes the coloring of your image and is pretty highly customizable. Um, so I try to pick one that really matches a little bit more. But if it doesn't totally match, that's OK, because you can choose the highlight and the shadow color to make it match better. So let's say we want this to be a little more pink. We go over here to that. And if you feel like the image is too dark, you go ahead and make the highlight brighter, maybe even close to white. Say we want to make it, oh, it's too pink. Let's make it a little more purple. You can slide it on the scale towards purple make the shadow darker if we want it to have better contrast. And now we've got a little guy who is a similar color to the rest of the graphic. So um, it, although I would recommend doing this to graphics that have Palestine flags, because then you can't see the actual colors of the flag. But <laughs> just using this for training purposes, the Palestine flag is now different shades of purple, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's uh, something that I use a lot. I have a lot of stuff in my uploads folder. I grabbed this photo of Robin to use. Uh, hee hee. <laughs> <laughs> so same thing, background remover is gonna take away all the stuff behind him. And I can, you know, put him down here and he's given a little speech. Although unfortunately for people with curly hair, it kind of doesn't really capture oh, yeah. your texture. Um, but we're doing the best we can with a software that is pretty cheap, so. There's also, um... Something that you use, like you can adjust. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, that yeah. There's that. I was gonna mention the position tool. So like, if 
there's layers of every element that you've added to to like your graphic. So if you need to move something like behind something else or in front, um, because you're not able to move it with your cursor for any reason, then you could change the position mm -hmm. with that tool. Right. And you can move it to the front or the back or just kind of adjust. Yeah, I did it. that before with this image. When we started, I moved it in front of all the text. Mm -hmm. um, but if you see these three dots over here and then you go to layer, you can bring it to the front, which it already is at the front. So there's not the option to do that. Or I could send you to the back if I, for some reason, wanted you to be behind that thing. We don't want to see you. Bye. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, and that's kind of the meat of it. I mean, this is like kind of the simple things that I do on every, we've got some pictures of Donald Trump here. Um, we've got some, yeah, this is kind of what I do for every graphic. Maybe we'll add a texture, I guess. That's also something I like to do. Texture background. What do we got? All right. So this is put one in that I don't really like, actually. Just kidding. Maybe I'll get rid of the word background and that'll yield better results. Okay. That's a little bit better. So we've got this little spotted texture. Maybe I want to make it this nice pink color. You can either make it bigger so that it covers the whole thing, but I don't really like to do this sometimes because like, look how big those dots are. That just looks like your dirty windshield or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what I'll do here is I will copy paste these guys so that there are four of them and that the whole graphic is covered. All right. So now we've got texture over the whole graphic, but that doesn't look so good because the texture is in front of the text and the image. So it looks a little bit dirty. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, which is kind of hard to do while I'm holding my microphone. So, um, gonna select all of these, which I'm just doing with hitting the shift key and clicking them. Okay. So they're all selected, right? We've got all four of them. This is a really nice, um, thing that you can do when you're like working on a graphic like a little part of the graphic that you want to stay together. And each time you move something around, you want all the elements to move with it. So you can hit group and now they're all together. Um, so if we want to move the, them to the back of the thing, you can hit position and send it to the back. I think it might make me do this individually, actually. Oh no, they're all in the back. Okay, do they all move? Yeah, okay. So now we've set these behind and they're no longer, you know, in front of all of the nice text and the nice images that we've chosen. Um, so that's kind of how you create a background texture. I do that in almost every, I feel like if a graphic, if I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is just missing a little zest. This is just mm -hmm. missing a little something. I will just like throw a texture on there and it usually makes it look good enough. Um, yeah, so that is what I usually do when I'm making a graphic. I feel like I'm just totally rambling and, you know, playing around. So I would love to answer any questions that you guys have about certain things. Yes. Can we get a Manac logo on there somewhere? Let's put a Manac logo on here. Thank you. Or yeah. Something lamb or I don't know, whatever this is. Called. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What, what did you ask? A logo. A logo. An organization. <laughs> yes. Where you go and yeah. um, or something. I have it in here somewhere. What I usually do actually is like grab the logo from other projects and then just like copy paste it. Right. Um, because I'm like so tired of scrolling. <laughs> so I'll just grab it from this one, which is a uh, shout out, an event that we have coming up this Friday. If you want to learn how to get an abortion in Minnesota or help somebody who needs one, come to our cool event. Um, but I'll just grab this little guy here, copy paste. There it is. Yeah. 
And wouldn't you know it, we really do use one color palette and it already matches. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But if you wanted to be super organized, I guess you could keep your logo in the brand tab, which is clearly what somebody else has been doing on this account, which I share with another person in the anti-war committee. <laughs> so thank you, Ashley. <laughs> um, any other questions about some of the stuff I've been doing or anything that you wanted to do on Canva that you're not sure how to do? Okay, cool. Well, I will go back to the presentation then. And this is just the general question section if people have any any questions generally about graphic design, would love to answer them. Yeah. Um, I know there's something, I think it starts with a C, but it's like the thing that's the one thing that your eye immediately goes to. It's like a, it's, yeah, I'm not sure what that's called. It. Yeah. And I feel like every graphic needs that and it's like, yeah. Like the focal point of a graphic yeah. or like something. Yeah. I think that's like something that I try to accomplish with the text that is the largest size or kind of an image that evokes the character of the action. So if it's going to be like a march in the streets, you want to make sure that you have an image of somebody who's like marching with the sign or, you know, setting expectations visually. Um, since we can only communicate with people so much via, you know, flyers that we hand out on the street. So any other questions? Because if not, we're running up on 630 here. So that is... What about a QR code sign? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Um, so regarding QR codes, that's something that I generate outside of Canva. Mm -hmm. um, I'm forgetting the name of the website that people use. You just Google it. Like QR code maker. Yeah. yeah. Like, just do it. Right. So if you want to like put in the link of what you're trying to get people to create a QR code, like export it um, as a JPEG or a PNG file type, and then you can go into Canva into this handy uploads thing, right? And just like upload the picture of the QR code. Um, you can drop it right into the project, which I'll just add another page and show you guys what I'm talking about because I actually was working on a couple QR codes here recently. So here's one. This is our Cash App QR code. Um, it doesn't look great because there's that white background behind it. But can, if can you, you get a, 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 your, a code to actually look good. So it's yeah, I'm about to show you. <laughs> um, so you go up here to edit image. In the same way that we were doing for those pictures of protesters, you can remove the background. Um, so if you use background remover, it should, there we go, clean that up a little bit. Um, I've actually done it on QR codes where it completely removes the white. I'm not sure why the program is just like choosing to have this white border, but I don't think it looks bad. The little, you know, curved white edges look pretty fine. Um, and then you always want to use your phone and test if the QR code still works. So let me see if I can grab another one. Those QR codes that I was using. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is like more of a traditional QR code. Again, click on the image, edit image, background remover. Now there's no white background. Um, and in the QR code maker, I chose to make it that red color. So if that's something that you can do on certain websites is like choose the color or you can add a group logo in the center. Uh, but that's how you get rid of the white background. And so if this was a graphic where you just wanted, you know, a QR in the corner, you could just stick it over here and you'd be good to go. Although I will say for social media, there's not really much use in putting a QR code because folks can't really scan something on their phone that's or like from their phone that's on their phone it's yeah. better for physical paper flyers so if i was like on my phone i would need to use my camera to scan my own phone you know what i'm saying yeah. yeah so um better to just put like a short link or say link in your bio if you have social media uh, but great for flyers great for uh passing it out at community events so any other questions All right, cool. Well, um, it seems like this training will be available on YouTube if you'd like to go back and reference it, but also slides are available here if you wanna use this QR code. <laughs> um, yeah.
So thanks, thanks so much for, for coming, y'all. I think these are really important skills for people to be using in the movement. And feel free to share, obviously, with the folks, share the slides with the folks that you organize with or whoever. Um, it's just a PDF from Google Drive. So yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I forgot your thoughts were there, so I must have a bigger picture. I'll see you later. Uh,